Alright guys, this is Vol, and today I want to talk about uh, some games of Warhammer that I played at the South Auckland War Games Club, which was quite fun. It's my, it was my first time at that particular club today, and uh, this particular picture you're watching, looking at right now, is uh, a picture of uh, a different style war game that uh, some other guys were actually playing uh, at the club. I wasn't actually involved in this game, but as you can see, there are uh, very small scale miniatures involving uh, sort of... Uh, Renaissance, well, not Renaissance, I think that's the wrong time period. Um, <laughs> definitely the wrong time period. This is a uh, uh, sort of Napoleonic uh, era, uh, sort of historical sort of rematch, uh, re uh, remake type war games. And uh, just showing you guys a couple of pictures just to give you an impression of what was going on at the club. But uh, I played two games of Warhammer today. And uh, one of them was against a Chaos opponent, and another one was against a, a uh, Wood Elves opponent. And in this picture, right here, you can see uh, some of the Chaos Guys models, but this uh, photo wasn't actually a, a taken of my game, it's just a, a picture that I took uh, before I left the club, uh, just to, so you can see his army. Now, um, I'm going to talk about what happened to the game and give you a verbal recount of what, what happened, like a bit of a report, but unfortunately I didn't take pictures during either of the games that I played, only a couple of pictures at the end before I left, uh, so you guys won't really have anything to go on. But I'll just give you a, a verbal recount of the of the game, so Tomb Kings versus uh, this particular Chaos Army. Here he had uh, you, pretty much everything you can see on the table is, is what he had. He, he also had the special character Wolfric the Wanderer, who's uh, who allows you to bring in one unit on a table edge, uh, exactly as if they sort of came back after pursuing off the table. He also had those Warhound uh, units and uh, a couple of big squads of warriors. Big squads uh, and two two units of Chaos Knights, as well as a, a sorcerer, lord, and a disc of Zinch, and the uh, aspiring champion on a uh, on a juggernaut, uh, which was pretty crazy. And what happened that game is that uh, my 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 chariots all flanked around the side uh, and killed one of his uh, units of Chaos uh, chosen uh, of Chaos Knights, not chosen knights, but just knights. Uh, and on the other flank, the Scorpions just uh, double teamed another group of knights, but the Scorpions both were destroyed by the knights straight away. And in the meantime, the chariots rolled over the other group of knights, so that was fine. And then I charged uh, him in the middle with his, with his juggernaut uh, hero and a big unit of warriors. And I charged him with, with my massive block of spearmen, sorry, my black, massive block of uh, cavalry, heavy cavalry. I charged him with my, uh, my tomb king and uh, some chariots. And uh, I still lost, and eventually I got withered away, and his, his aspiring cha uh, champion just kept challenging my characters, and uh, the Tomb King died. Uh, and that really just went down the tubes, and I managed to, to lose that game. My, my, my catapult misfired on the first turn, and, and so on and so forth. So uh, what, turned, what could have been quite an interesting game turned out to be a bit of a slaughter. Wolfric showed up behind my catapult and, and destroyed me. So uh, that's the first loss to the Tomb Kings of the day. Uh, although I can't wait to play this guy again. And bear in mind that I'm, I'm, I was using my FluffyCon list, my, my dumbed-down list for next week, uh, just to practice with it. And uh, this guy is using a, a pretty decent-looking chaos list, which is very varied and... Uh, very powerful. Anyway, uh, the second game that I played was against uh, some Wood Elves, and what I want to show you here is, is just one picture, uh, sort of showing the overview of the battle right at the point where my where where my opponent decided to give up. I actually managed to win this game, but uh, I was almost about to throw it away and say I've lost uh, halfway through. Uh, I'll tell you what happened. Uh, by the way, there was more terrain on the table than this. Uh, the guys were sort of taking the terrain away and packing things up while I was getting the camera out of the car. And yeah, yeah this isn't exactly the exact positioning of the models either. It was just roughly. But uh, what's happened here is that the, the dragon with the highborn on it is eaten through one squad of archers and the hierophant has flown over just next to him so that he can't be charged. He's out of sight range for the next turn. The, carry, um, the, the crew for the uh, catapult are gone. Uh, now, what's happened over in the far distance there is that the, um, the, the Carrion actually wiped out a squad of, of archers and had uh, beaten the Glade Guard in combat, unbelievably. I'm just going to show you this other picture here where you can see a bit more close up with the, the Carrion on, in the flank of the Glade Guard about to beat them uh, and, and squawk, squawk over their faces. The, the melee skeletons are, are, are homing in on them too. But what, what really uh, took the cake in this game was the fight involving... The uh, the horseman unit. Now, um, this photo that you're looking at here, uh, previously, just previous before this uh, photo was taken, there were um, this unit was totally swamped by archers. Uh, there were two big squads of archers in combat with the um, the horsemen because the horsemen had broken through uh, some other unit. Uh, it, it, the horsemen had broken through a unit of dryads and had overrun straight into his. 
uh, his, his Altakin hero. And the, the, the hero had been reduced to one wound from some archers uh, previously, and the horseman managed to actually kill the altar uh, hero in combat. Amazingly, one guy just struck him down with a spear. Uh, and then the horseman single-handedly beat off all of the archers charging them. Uh, the scorpion had been delayed uh, via tunneling. The other scorpion got lost in the tunnels, and this particular sc- scorpion charged him from behind, killed the spell singer immediately. Uh, all of the archers died, and uh, all he was left with was these dryads and the, the, char- the, the, the chariots the two remaining chariots here uh, flanked in and wiped them out. So that's what caused him to concede the game. But um, one amazing thing that happened, and I'm just going to show you this other picture just so you can see a bit of a better view of the of the of the horseman here. One amazing thing that happened that happened this game is that I, I flanked around the right hand side with uh, a big group of chariots and my king. And I didn't get any incantations off, and nobody charged, and I got countercharged by the war dancers. The war dancers ripped through my whole chariot unit. Um, the standard of the cursing wound uh, didn't do anything because of their ward saves, and amazingly, uh, the war dancers used their killing blow to just absolutely annihilate my tomb king immediately, and, and he he got killed. Now the tomb kings have a rule where the the tomb king is cursed, so if you kill him, you have to take a leadership test, which the war dancers failed. They got like eleven or something, and they failed it, and that means I inflict d6 wounds on them, which which can't be saved by regeneration or any armor saves or any ward saves at all. And that actually took out the entire squad of war dancers. So that was amazing. Uh, the Tomb King having a bit of last laughter, even though the war dancers, you know, well took out more than their points worth, uh, it still <laughs> prevented me from having to deal with a war dancer unit. And it just came down to this one fight here that you're looking at right here uh, with this, uh, uh, this, uh, this, um, Heavy cavalry unit surrounded by wood elf archers uh, because they, they they tried to they decided to charge and to support uh, the Altakin, thinking the Altakin would win the combat for them. But the Altakin died, and uh, I, I stayed in combat for long enough. I used a summoning thing to bring back a few guys, and then finally the, the scorpion showed up. Charon's chariots showed up and uh, just demolished all the rest of the archers. Uh, so that won it. Uh, yeah, so amazing game. Uh, my first victory as Tomb Kings. Very elated uh, to actually have a victory finally. Uh, but I was just ready to call it. After my Tomb King uh, was about to die and uh, the battle was going horribly everywhere else, I was going to just say GG. You know, I was going to say, oh, there's another loss. But I stuck in there. And amazingly, my opponent was the one that decided to uh, call it quits. So, great stuff. I'm going to have another report tomorrow. Hopefully, I'll take some more pictures tomorrow, uh, and I'll upload them if uh, that happens to be the case. Uh, by the way, guys, I actually have a Photoshop, uh, sorry, not a Photoshop page, a an Image Shack page, which I'll link you guys to this, this video. I might upload a few pics uh, here so that you can watch them in higher, higher detail or look at them in higher detail. But otherwise, that's it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, little story about the Tomb Kings, and uh, hopefully, I'll have some more for you tomorrow. See you guys later.